I was reading like I, I, some of what he did, curls and and like squats, he, like some of his, some of the I don't know if it's like two hundred pound, was it two hundred pound curls? Yes. And, and he had a pretty impressive squat as well, from what I understood. I don't know exactly what it was because I there was some of the numbers seemed to be different, but he was an extremely strong guy. <laughs> well, he was strong, and I'll tell you an interesting story going back to the calf development. Um, when my dad uh, passed in 2007, I was back in South Africa, obviously, and um, Arnold called wanting to speak to my mother, but she was too distraught. And um, unfortunately, uh, that was the start of uh, a decline of health because they were like joined at the hip. I like to say they had a fairy tale marriage. They almost hit 55 years. Um, but um, there was a, a pure love story, and um, um, she just declined. She developed uh, dementia, which went into full-blown Alzheimer's. Mm. But she was too distraught to talk to Arnold, and um, I said, when I come back, um, I'm going to hold a service, you know, celebration of Reg's life. And at the time, he was with Maria. He was the governor at the time, and he said, well, Maria and I would like to host it. Uh, he kept to his word. And... I have to say, it was, there's certain things in your life which are highlights, and this one stands out. And as sad as it was, it was a highlight for me. Having, you know, lived the experience of growing up with him, having, fortunately, like a lot of young kids, they look up to certain people, mostly athletes, and they become their heroes. I grew up with my hero and my best friend and my mentor. And... Uh, at the event, which was also like quite an eye opener to me, um, even though he never lived in this country, there were over 300 people. And it was held um, in um, a hotel in the Sheraton Miramar in Santa Monica. And Arnold spoke, and I have to say that if you know Arnold, um, he's very, very charismatic and one could say ego, but there was absolutely no ego. This was all about his hero. Mm -hmm. And he actually said on stage, if it wasn't for Reg Park, I wouldn't be here today. In the memorial program, he wanted to write something and he said, heroes are the best of the best. And he said, they go to a level that no one else is able to go to and Reg Park is my hero. Anyway, he told, because he's, he's got a great sense of humor as well. And he told a story about my dad and he said, um, you know, I, I met Reg for the first time in the UK um, in 1967. And I had, um, or 66 it was, I'd just won the junior Mr. Europe. And the story goes that my dad had won the universe in 65, which was his last Mr. Universe. And in... 66, he was in um, the UK doing exhibitions. And the promoter of the show at that time, uh, the promoters were Wag and Diane Bennett, um, who used to promote a lot of shows, and um, they used to bring out the top guys every year, mostly from the States, to do exhibitions. And my dad had had a history with them, and him and Wag had trained together. Wag used to go to the north of England, which I'm told a lot of guys from all over the UK, when my dad started making a name for himself, would go to Leeds on the weekend and train with him. And uh, Wag had a gym. Wag and Diane had a gym in their home in London in the, in the basement. And I remember when I was there in 69, when I was 12, I... Um, saw that gym, you know, I visited that gym. And at the time, uh, Wag said, there's a young guy here who's just won the junior Mr. Europe. And you, his idol, he wants to meet you. And it was Arnold. And um, they met each other, and Arnold knew everything possibly he could about my dad. He knew um, that every year he would bring out the top guys to South Africa to do exhibitions. And he said to my dad, when will you... They worked out together. And he actually told a funny story about that because he happened to be in South Africa when 
after my mom passed and we had a service there which coincided with the first ever Arnold Classic in South Africa in 2016. Uh, and the next day we had my mom's service and he spoke and he told this really humorous story about my dad when they were working out together. And uh, my dad said to him, if you win the Mr. Universe, I'll bring you to South Africa, which he did the following year. And he came out and it would always be in the summertime, Christmas time in South Africa, December. And uh, Arnold was 19 at the time. And um, he stayed with the family and we traveled the country. Now, what my dad would do, that one of the reasons he'd bring out these top guys to South Africa was because he had uh, his gym business, but he also had his equipment, health food, supplement, clothing, bags line as well. But what he'd do is he'd set up a competition in every city throughout the country, the major cities, mostly beach towns. And they'd have a local show, the Mr. Natal from Durban, the Mr. Cape, et cetera, et cetera. And my dad and whoever the guest star was would travel to the different locations and they would be the guest posers. Um, the day of the show at the local department stores in each city in the mornings on the Saturday morning, uh, and most of them carried Reg Park equipment. They would come and do a, a little demonstration and my dad would hold who can do the most bench presses, who can do the most pull-ups, and the winner would get a can of, of Reg Park protein powder. Mm -hmm. And of course, whoever the guest was would be there. So this would create more of a hub and popularity for the show that night. And um, so it really helped with his business as well. At the end of the tour, which was always fun because we'd travel around the country and my dad had the top local comedian at the time and uh, all the guys who worked for him would come and be the stage hands, putting the equipment on the, on, the, on the stage, taking it off, setting everything up. So there was a great camaraderie and he'd have a, a band as well. So he was a good promoter, mm. way ahead of his time and good mail order business as well. So at the end of the tour, they would have the grand finale in Johannesburg, which would be the Mr. South Africa. So Arnold came and he spent time with the family. The first time we ever met him, uh, I, I ever met him was on, um, on the beach in Durban. That was the first stop. And my dad went to meet him in at the airport. We were on the beach, my mother and my um, sister and I. And he said uh, to Arnold, he said, it's my daughter Janessa's birthday today and which Arnold mentioned in his story. And he said, so we're gonna stop and get some flowers and I want you to give her some flowers. I think she was turning 13. <laughs> so he came to the beach, just come out of, you know, Europe, Austrian winter. He was lily, lily white skinned and he definitely had the size, but he didn't have the definition of muscularity. And he created quite a sensation because he started posing on the beach. And uh, because he had been in the sun a lot, he developed these blisters from second degree burns. He wasn't used to it. But anyway, spent a lot of time. And my dad he tells a story how 4.45 in the morning, a knock on the door. He had no, the guests would normally sleep in my, my room and I'd double up with my sister at a spare bed. And he said, come on. He said, where are we going? And he couldn't, didn't have a great command of the English language in those days. He said, we're going to work out. He says, but Reg, Quarter to five in the morning, he says, that's when we work out. Five o'clock in the morning, he says, and that's sit and have cornflakes with Reg Park protein powder. <laughs> and he said they went into the gym and he said he thought he was strong because he said he was doing standing calf raises with 350 pounds. He says then he saw Reg doing it. He had the whole stack, but then he had put one, two, three people on top. So he said it was the equivalent of a thousand pounds. He says never seen this in his life before. But my dad told him, if you develop your calves, you'll be the greatest bodybuilder in the world. And when he finally came to the States, he talks about it to this day, he cut all his sweatpants off at the knee so he could be aware that these calves were under par to the rest of his physique. <laughs> so that's so, how he turned, turned it around then? Yes. And become yes. one of his strengths? Yes. I, 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 um, 
I, I was when I when I looked at that story about Arnold, I found some really old um, videos about him talking, and in fact, there was a presentation. But it, it seems as though uh, your father created the blueprint for Arnold. You know, everything from the from the movies for the you know being what, what he was doing in America, winning the shows, like the the all the business. You know, owning gyms. He even said, you know, it seemed as though he he literally modelled. Everything that he did in his, or most of it, um, on um, on what what your father did. Very much so, and in fact, from a very young age, m my dad could see how driven this guy was, and he actually showed my dad a list of everything he wanted to achieve in his life, which he actually has. And um, he 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 tells a story how um, when he was 15, he walked past the bookstore in Austria um, and he saw a bodybuilding magazine, a Weida magazine, and on the cover was my dad. And he went in and he got the magazine, he read it from cover to cover. To cover. And uh, he decided I want to look like this. And at the time, one of my dad's movies came out, uh, Hercules, Hercules movies. Right. And he went to see the movie and I, Believe it was, I can't remember the exact name because he made five movies, but there was a scene of my dad holding a rope and working his way across the rope and, you know, pretty impressive for those days with the lats and everything. And he said, that's what he wants to be like. And he had his pictures all over his wall, which was unusual at that time. I mean, I grew up, I had football all over my wall, yeah. but Arnold had all these bodybuilders and his mother thought it was a little bit strange, you know. And that was pretty much the start of it. And he yeah. went on to be on, become Conan. And yes. like when you, dad, I didn't really know a lot Hercules. about Hercules, yeah. but when you look at it, it's very similar, similar. Um, very. In, in everything. So that's, that's quite fascinating. And, and, and to Arnold's credit, I have to say, to this day, um, when he gives motivational spe speeches or when he's interviewed, very rarely does he not mention who inspired him. Mm. And in print interviews, he always mentions Reg Park. Which is quite so, unique because the people I've met, and I've spent quite a bit of time with, with Frank Zane as well, and, and, and I know they kind of had a bit of a fallout. And I, from what I understand about Arnold um, is he is, uh, obviously he got to where he was um, through having that sort of, you know, you have to have a bit of an ego. And, of course. And you have to be driven and you upset people. And, and so for, without knowing him, and I don't want to sort of, even say the wrong thing, but he's he's not always he doesn't always give a lot of people credit for certain things, and um, he, you know, for he he definitely really says a lot about your father, and you know that must be you know you don't hear that about many people that he talks about, and that that must be quite a unique situation. I, I understand. Well, you know, a lot of people ask me what Arnold's like as a person. Fortunately, over the years. I met him, first met him when I was 10, you know. <laughs> so I've known him for 55 years of my life. Um, so I know him. I don't see him a lot, we stay in contact. Um, but in terms of my family, uh, he's always been very mag magnanimous. And in terms of the love that he had for my parents, you know, to the point where they were his annual guests every year at the Arnold Classic, all expenses covered you know, I think speaks volumes of, you know, how he felt about my family, mm. you know. And he visits South Africa numerous times. And he talks about the best gyms he ever trained in, obviously the original Gold's gym and the World gym. Uh, but he said the Reg Park's gym with the windows on each side and the air coming in, just, you know, the equipment, the old equipment. So um, I have to give him credit for that. And I know he can have that brash side, <laughs> you know, but my family hasn't been on the end no. of that, you know. I think Arn's the kind of guy, if you're his friend, you're his friend, as long as you, you know, because I've seen a lot of people fall by the wayside. And unfortunately, you know, when you're a big name, when you're famous, there are these sycophants mm. and then you really see them for who they really are, you know, but he's kept his core group of friends, I mean, him and Franco Colombo had a relationship for many, many years. Um, another humorous story, 
Franco also spoke at my dad's service. And he was, he's pretty humorous, Franco, he right. was. And he spoke about how, um, you know, Arnold, he says, uh, you know, he was impressed with, you know, my dad's strength and on, Franco was certainly one of the world's strongest men, pound for pound, especially if you consider what he was lifting compared to these, you know, 400 pound power lifters and strength, uh, world's strongest men. Um, but he said, you know, of course, Reg had fantastic calves and Arnold never had calves. <laughs> so everybody started laughing. So Arnold got up and he said, Franco, he said, this is not about my calves or your height, <laughs> which was classic, you know, but that's the kind of relationship they had.